I am nine years old, and I am shaking with anxiety. My stomach is full of butterflies. I am about to ask my mom a difficult question, and I am not sure I am prepared to hear the answer. Mom, is daddy my real dad? We are sitting under a deeply shaded patio on a hot summer day. My mom looks up from her book with an expression that shows no surprise. She knew I'd eventually notice that my dad's acorn brown skin does not match my fair skin, that his jet black braid clashes with my then blonde one. Yes, she says, daddy is your real dad. And in fact, other than me just knowing that, we've had to validate your paternity with the federal government because you and daddy are Native American. As she proceeds patiently with an explanation, my mom uses two words that have come to define my identity more than the color of my skin. Blood quantum. Blood quantum is a standard of measurement used to determine the amount of Native American heritage a person possesses. Along with the blood of purebred dogs and thoroughbred horses, the blood of Native Americans is measured and verified by the federal government. Blood quantum is unfamiliar to most non-Native people, but within Indian country and for Native people across our continent, blood quantum carries immeasurable importance. It is deeply intertwined with identity and recognition. And a certain amount is required for enrollment at most tribes, including my own. My tribe, the Rincon Band of Luceno Indians, is one of the 574 federally recognized tribes in the United States today. The tribes are sovereign nations with distinctive rights, including the sacred right to select their own citizens. And yet, despite the sovereignty of the tribes, their use of blood quantum demonstrates the influence of the federal government. When I was born, my parents followed a well-worn trail blazed by millions of Native people who have pursued enrollment in a tribe. Not dissimilar to a foreigner seeking citizenship in a new country, my tribal enrollment process involved paperwork, legal attestations, and proof of lineage. Ultimately, I was issued a certificate of degree of Indian blood by the US Department of Interior's Bureau of Indian Affairs. With this verification, I was enrolled in the tribe of my father, my grandfather, my great-grandfather, and back through the generations. The US federal government began imposing blood quantum on Native people as early as the 1700s, assigning a quantifiable value to a person's Indianness meant dilution could occur naturally through intertribal and interracial unions. For the federal government, blood quantum was an efficient means to an inevitable end, extinction. Even today, many tribes, including my own, 
embrace blood quantum because they are grasping for a scientific method to quantify ancestry. But blood quantum is a knife that cuts both ways. As blood thins, Native people are excluded. Recently, I heard a heartbreaking situation that occurred in Southern California. An enrolled tribal member, father of twin boys, suffered an untimely death. His college-age sons grew up on the reservation, but do not possess enough blood quantum to be enrolled members of their father's tribe, leaving them ineligible to inherit their childhood home. Because of blood quantum, they had no standing to remain on the reservation once their father was gone. Consequences of blood quantum are real and powerful. There can be a loss of benefits, like a residence, but just as devastating are the negative effects on a person's identity and sense of belonging. Throughout my life, I've met people who, when they learn I'm Native American, have said something like, oh, I have Native heritage too but I have no idea what tribe. Imagine knowing your tribe, growing up on your reservation, practicing your customs, but being told you do not have enough blood to be recognized as a treasured citizen of your nation. Can you imagine how that would make you feel? Each tribe has the right to determine a path forward. I speak for no one but myself as I stand here before you. But without an alternative to blood quantum, we are facing the extinction of many tribes, the protectors of our irreplaceable indigenous culture. Blood quantum designed for extermination, cannot be allowed to threaten the extraordinary heritage of my children, my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren, and down through the generations. I believe there is a solution more powerful than blood quantum. What if we embrace the ways our ancestors define citizenship through proximity and time invested in family, traditions, and ways of life. Our relatives built nations strong and true. These nations were rooted in something intangible, unquantifiable, and yet unbreakable, kinship. Redefining tribal citizenship around kinship embraces the spiritual, emotional, and cultural links between us, which are stronger than anything simply biological. Kinship would allow the tribes to select those people who bear the strongest family affiliations and cultural connections creating cohesion that is far more powerful than a precarious measurement of blood. In Lusania, we say, no shem lovic, or my heart is good, an expression of gratitude and open-heartedness. For my fellow natives who are hearing my words, I offer them with love and support of our precious sovereign nations. And for my non-native audience, future founders of businesses, writers of policy, and leaders of change, I invite you to care about the native people of our continent and to contemplate how your choices can strengthen, not dilute, the connections between us. Notion Lovic. Let us embrace 
kinship. Thank you. Thank you.